staying steady yes. in tough times. Yes. Because it, it, um, I want to bring John Graves in here, millionvoices.org. John, <clears throat> welcome to the program today. You know, when Thanks I, for having me. You bet. When, when I started thinking about that, Paul stayed steady in some pretty dark and troubling times in his own ministry. I mean, they tried to kill the guy. Same thing with John. You know, and you get to think thinking about that, but our faith should be that stabilizing factor for every one of us, shouldn't it be? That's exactly right. Ecclesiastes 10.4 is one of my life verses. When the spirit of the ruler should rise up against you, do not leave your post. Calmness lays great errors to rest. Mm. If you could hold steady in a crisis, and I love, part of what I love about both of you guys, we're talking about very serious times. We're talking about very dark times in America. We're talking about a lot of the body of Christ and a lot of the nation. Half the nation is very confused and very upset. And yet, Jesus could sleep in a storm. He sure. could rest in a sure. storm. And the way you open this, we're very relaxed here. God is at work. We may not always understand it, but we're just mere humans. We're trying to find Him. He's, he's the one that's going to work all this out. We just want to be finding Him. And part of the way to do that is to stay calm. And He said He'd never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I'll be with you always. And I know some of you feel really low right now. Right. He's with you. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't leave you or, or forsake you. You know, as you're thinking about as I was thinking about Aaron and her holding up Moses' hands in the battle, in the heat of the battle, mm. um, that word that that's used there for they steadied him. That word is in Hebrew, amuna, and it means faith. So your faith is the steadying force in your life. You knew Tim, I was going to do a Hebrew. Yeah, I love lesson, it. Right? I love that about you. I mean, I, <laughs> if I need Hebrew, that's where I go right yes, there. You, go. <laughs> you know, as we talked about that march, you, the last story he just said right there, um, I'm all for marches. I'm all for peaceful protest. I'm all for holding rallies on the mall. But if we're going to be honest about it, Tim and John, you both know this. If you're going to be honest about it, they really are largely ignored. The, the people who make the decisions, the Supreme Court justices aren't outside seeing it. Yeah. The congressmen are in their offices. The, the answer is, is for you as a person that lives in that person's district, you make an appointment with your member of Congress and you just tell them, I'm so-and-so, I live at this address and I vote. And I want to talk to you about abortion or this or that or the other. And, and that's the best way. It's when you show up at their office, not, not disruptive. I'm talking about with an appointment. That's when you move the needle. John, what are your thoughts? We, we, we have seen that. In fact, we've done it with pastors. We would have large pastor gatherings in, in the capital. of. We did this in several states over the last several years. And the pastors, we would instruct them to go to those uh, legislatures, the state legislatures. You can walk right into most of them, say, I'm a pastor. I represent this many people. Or if you're a person, I'm a business owner. And I would like to pray for you. But I'd also like to know where you stand on these issues. And, and they only get people who attack them or try to buy them off. Uh, lobbyists. And they're, they're, what we need is the body of Christ. And I will say this, what you're talking about on the marches, the marches are really a degree, right? So they can be a lot of meaningless ones or repetition ones, just like a repetition prayer that Jesus says, don't just keep praying the same thing, pray with power. And yet some marches get to such a place like Dr. Martin Luther King, I want to say uh, something about that since it's MLK day. Yeah, sure. He's Reverend yeah. Martin Luther King. He's a pastor and everybody blows over that and says, oh, let's talk about his quotes. Let's talk about what he does. Let's talk about it. It's like, hang on, hang on. He said America could be great again and it's the church that's going to make it great again. It's yeah. a pastor leading the people of God mm -hmm. in a time in the 60s where the alternative was Marxism, socialism, and what mm. we're now seeing yeah. being co-mingled in with that. And I want to be very, very clear to our listeners. He was a pastor first. Yeah. So true. Yes, and he, he, that's he, why it worked. he refused any kind of violence or looting or exactly. anything like that. He refused yeah. it. You, yeah. you were yeah. right out of his group if you, if you advocated that or you did that. To me, the optics of canceling this march just don't look very good. It looks like you're acquiescing 
to uh, to the mob, so to speak. Uh, you know, the pandemic is getting a lot of credit for a lot of things. We have got to get back to living our lives. Now, I totally appreciate and respect the decision by the March for Life people not to do this, but I think it's it's not a good thing for us to to give in to this mob <coughs> culture of the pandemic. You know, we got we got to put our lives on hold. We've got to get back to living our lives uh, for a, 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 a disease that 99.9% .9 of the people survive, John. So I, I guess I'm a little torn with this one, so to speak. You're you're probably one of those people, like we talked about on the show last week, instead of the tea party where they threw all the tea over the taxes at the Revolutionary War, you want everybody to go throw their mask uh, out the door. And so I think the majority of uh, our listeners and people in this country would probably agree with you. I, I do think it matters, and I, I'm kind of an and also. We need to do that everywhere we're allowed to do it. But when we're not, we go a different route. And so sometimes Jesus went into the cities, sometimes he went into the villages, and sometimes you can get out there in a big place and sometimes when you can't, the Apostle Paul sometimes was prevented to go into some city. We're not exactly told why. Maybe it was spiritual warfare or threat of death. You have to then also come around the other way. And so, uh, but I agree with both of you. We, we ha it's the church, really, that is going to change I'm, things. I'm We're the ones that can influence them. I'm showing an alternative. Right. If you can't go march, meet with your yeah. elected representatives in person. I love it. Yeah. E even if it's their local office. Yeah. I feel like we need to have a group hug right now. Tim, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Gateway Pundit reported recently the leader of the Boogaloo Boy Group, who is also affiliated with Black Lives Matter, boasted about organizing the armed insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Contrary to the allegations leveled by the political left and their allies in the mainstream media, anti-Trump groups primarily perpetuated the insurrection on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. And we've talked about that on the program many times, uh, Greg and John, that uh, there, were, there were some Trump people uh, in that Capitol building, but I think some of those, most of those folks well, just got caught up in I the... Mean, you, can look, you can look at the video that we were showing you. you there's some people, it's like they're, they're tourists, and they got their cameras, and they're, and they're just <laughs> right. looking around, you know, on a regular tour, even taking photos. And it's funny because I could see the moms and the dads staying within the ropes going through the uh, rotunda there and and the ones that were messing up things outside of it. I'm like, look at it. They're staying within the lines. I'm like, there's your Trump guys right there as I was watching that. Yeah, if you look at the timestamp, they were some of the, the Antifa John Sullivan guy was already breaking in before this, the speech was even done and the people could all be there because it was a long march to get down there, mm -hmm. which had been pre-planned. My brother was there. Tim was there. Lots of uh, people that we talked to were there and he saw these people come in and some well-meaning people, it's a mob mentality. We talked about this in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The scripture condemns mobs because then th that's what killed Jesus. They think irrationally. And so if you get a, a base sort of group like the Apostle Paul talks about to try to stir up a mob against him, then all of a sudden they knew well-meaning people or misguided people. And that's one of the big problems right now is so much misinformation and it can get well-meaning people off or misguided. Mm -hmm. According to the Epic Times, Senate Democrat uh, Whip Dick Durbin of Illinois says he will, he will not formally recommend for his colleagues to vote in favor of convicting President Trump on the charge of incitement to insurrection, what you're talking about right there. Durbin is the number two Senate Democrat, said Sunday he will not urge his colleagues to vote to convict in the second impeachment trial, saying members should follow their own conscience. But he's advocating not doing this. John, you're an attorney as well as a pastor. To me, with the Dershowitz story and then now this, I don't see how it's constitutional to impeach a citizen who used to be president. It's not. It's silliness. It's, it's, it's payback, political payback. And honestly, it's preparation for 2024 on some of the people on the Republican and all of the Democrats don't ever want to see Donald Trump again because he made a lot of them pay and a lot of them deal with things that no, they've never wanted to, to deal with before. But to impeach somebody who's no longer in office, the entire purpose, like they said with Nixon, the minute he resigned, they stopped that trial. And that's what's going to happen here, in my opinion unless it is just blatant. And the problem with that is you're now setting a precedent that could just turn around and bite you in 2020. Well, you know, it, it, here's the deal. If we're going to do that, there's some that we should maybe impeach. I, I'm, I'm trying to think maybe Woodrow Wilson. Why don't we impeach him? Um, we need yeah. to go back and look at that. Maybe even FDR 
because he tried to sub he, circumvent the Constitution? I mean, should there be a limit to impeaching? I'm being sarcastic now. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, the Constitution is very clear. Jurisdiction is what you lose. Jurisdiction just mainly means we have authority over something. And, and in a, law, a normal lawsuit, a civil lawsuit, if, a, if you're suing a person and that person were to die, the case goes away because there's no longer that person there. Like mm -hmm. in a crime, what, what are you going to do? Convict them of something? What they're trying to do here is keep him... Number one, hit him when he's down, and number two, make him and his followers, who they're trying to attack, go away. And that's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. A lot of them are confused right now. A lot of them don't know what to do right now. But I'm telling you, keep your eyes on God. We can, we can stay calm in a boat, and we can discern things that are very confusing. Even when there's a dark period in, in history, the people of God are the ones that are supposed to discern that and lead the way. Well, yeah. going back to Israel, the sons of Issachar, yeah. they said they knew the signs of the times. Now, if you, look, if you know that whole story of that, that tribe of Israel, said they knew the signs of the times and what the nation ought to do. And they're living in a, in a, they're in the north of Israel in a divided kingdom in a very dark place. Yet there was a group, there was a remnant that knew what to do. And I believe that's the viewers of this program. Yeah, you know, this, the old yeah. saying is people don't care how much you know until they know, they know how much you care. Uh, you know, Joe Biden's inauguration theme is America United, but it's people, other people in his party who are coming out saying, let's not do this and not the president elect himself. So what that to me, that's the bigger message here, John. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. And, and as we talked about the other day on the program, some of the things they're wanting to indict to incite violence, which means give a speech that didn't include go do a riot or go do that then you'd have to impeach Kamala. You'd have to impeach Pelosi. And we don't even want to talk about China with, with Biden. It's just, it's not just bad precedent. It's unconstitutional. You don't have jurisdiction at a base constitutional level. It's going to be interesting. I believe it's pretty powerful that Dick Durbin, the number two Democrat in the Senate, is saying, let's not do this. Why is he doing that? From a practical standpoint, there's already going to be a blowback. It would be 10 times more intense if they try to follow through with this. Absolutely. And so he's seeing that going... Let's calm down. Well, and he knows that um, after Wednesday, there will be uh, new challenges, immigration challenges and other challenges that this president's going to face. Tim? The Epic Times is reporting on Friday, a caravan of as many as 9,000 Honduran migrants are headed towards the U.S. southern border. The group is calling on the incoming administration to honor its commitments to migrants and asylum seekers. They are referring to a December pledge to smooth out migration issues made by the incoming National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan. And, you know, John, uh, this certainly is a very serious issue going forward. And, and it, it kind of brings up the issue that we don't, on the left, uh, we don't want walls and we don't want security forces dealing with anybody coming in unless it's our house or our job at the Capitol. And so now you see 25,000 troops, walls everywhere, it's locked in. We know it works. And there's not just China and Iran, but the borders are now going to be a massive, massive problem. And politically, where the left has been motivated is we want those people in so that they, they will uh, be massive votes for us in the future. They're going to have a big, big problem. And Trump put that uh, problem, the wall, the security in our nation versus us being uh, the caretaker for the rest of the world, which nations historically, biblically, aren't called to do. So you're exactly right. That's going to be a big, big issue, and it's just beginning. Huh. I never thought about that, but we did get a wall built, didn't we, around the Capitol? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I, I, I never put that together. And, and Pelosi's got one up. around her house, too. <laughs> I just never put that together until just now that that you made that analogy. Very smart there, John Graves. Tim? Uh, it's just the hypocrisy is the part that boggles my mind. It's like the scripture, yes, we're supposed to discern the times, but sometimes I remember a, a, a prophetic kind of a spirit-filled pastor in England saying one time, he's a much older man, he'd been over 500 churches. He said, sometimes people in the church just lose plain old common sense. It's like if a wall doesn't work there, why do you have one around your house? Why did you throw one up instantly around the Capitol? You know, John, one of the things that I've appreciated about you since you became part of our family here at the Victory Channel in America Stands is you bring such a, a calming uh, nature about you because you, you bring the practical along with the Word of God. Uh, I know there are a lot of people watching us right now. As you said earlier in the program, they're, they're confused, they're discouraged, 
Uh, what would you say to people? Because they're hearing voices from everywhere, but what would you say to people right now? You know, if I could say something to the body of Christ right now, Ecclesiastes 7.18 says, A wise man avoids all extremes in the NIV translation. Some translations even say holds on to both extremes. Sometimes to stay balanced, we've got to be careful not if people, we see people going in one ditch, we overcorrect a car and go all the way in the other ditch. There's people out there with bad theology on both sides. And one extreme of that is, oh, let's not believe. Oh, Christians shouldn't be involved in politics. Like, no, no, no. We need to wake up and get involved. But then there's some well-meaning people that start latching on and their hope is in a candidate or a party or, or some theory of something that doesn't make a lot of practical sense. If God says it, keep praying it. But if God doesn't say it, Part of what we've got to do is say, hey, we know in part and we see in part, we're going to continue to follow God, but we need to find Him and stay with Him. And part of the body of Christ is we have to help other people who are watching these two extremes that are unhealthy and go, how can we encourage these people? Well, there's a lot of people confused because so much misinformation is out there. I mean, just on this show, we're constantly ferreting, well, we heard this, well, we heard this. Is it actually real before we try to tell it to somebody? That's very difficult to do because the culture we live in right now is trying to silence voices yeah. of believers, of those who have these kind of thoughts. And so you, know, you have John, to work as, a little as, harder now. As you mentioned that, and you're so correct. Thank you for bringing that up. In silencing voices, you can find that all throughout Scripture, especially mm -hmm. with the church. Um, Peter and John in what Acts chapter 2, 3, Acts chapter 4, yep. where it says, speak no more in this name. They commanded them. They were silencing exactly. them. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you see that all the way through the scripture. They tried to silence them by snuffing them out. They tried to, with Moses, with Jesus, when they're born, when, when God's moving, there is a freak out on the enemy side to try to shut it down with murder or with silencing them. And that's what they said. They beat them and sent them home. And it's like, I'm not going to stop talking. Maybe we're entering into the end times. We need to have that conversation. We're not surprised by this. There's going to be hardships. Jesus said, don't be surprised by it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's going to happen. Take well, heart. I Paul, have overcome the world. So. Paul writes this to Timothy, a young pastor, and he says, know this, in the last days, perilous or hard times shall come. Yeah. And then he yes. talks about the number one reason, men will be lovers of self, selfish. And so I yes. would encourage the body of Christ, selfishness it doesn't have so much to do with your giving. It can in, be involved with your giving. It's you withholding what you have the ability to give. Mm -hmm. If you have the ability exactly. to be nice to somebody and you withhold that, if you have the ability to uh, encourage somebody and you withhold that, you've just opened the door to hard or perilous times in your life. So now more than ever, we should be encouraged. This is our time to shine. Am I correct? I agree. And the scripture my wife and I have been talking about is this. God's just keeps speaking to me over and over Consider it all joy, my brothers, when, not if, but when you suffer various trials of all kinds. And so what people are upset about, a lot of people, are we know there was fraud. We know it's just it. Ratliff, who's in charge of it. We just heard it with Mike's update. Literally, China interfered with this election. People are furious because the wind is just going by and they're trying to just shut all that down. You can't even use the word fraud on YouTube and all these other social platforms. And yet we have to go... Things have looked hard before. They, they complained about these things with Moses. It's been worse. Now we got to make bricks without straw. And he continued to obey God. So what I'm saying to the listeners, discern what God is doing. Mm. Continue to obey what he's asked you to do and believe in faith that God is able to do what he said. My w wife and I and some of our kids are reading through the scripture and we just got to this passage this morning. My wife was listening to it. G every one of God's promises that was good came to pass. Mm, wow. And sometimes it takes longer than we like, yes. but every one, when God speaks, it will happen. It's just a matter of us holding on until it does happen sometimes. Yeah. You know, the overriding theme of people that are writing into us on Facebook and other places is the fact that they appreciate so much what we're doing here in terms of telling the truth. But I think really more so than that, it's about the spirit of faith in which we do it in. So it really matters going forward what you put your eyes and your ears on, doesn't it, John? It really does. It's like too many people are watching fake news or bad news or depressing news instead of the good news. And so <laughs> if you, whatever you keep your mind stayed on, that's what's going to, that's what's going to resonate inside of you. Yeah. We, it's not like we're blind. We're not ostriches with our head in the sand. We see the fraud. We see the ugliness. We see the hypocrisy. We see the lies. We see the swamp. 
But our hope is not in those things. Our hope is in God. Don't understand why he's doing this, but to be frank, I didn't understand why he brought Trump in the in the first place four years ago. So God, God's ways are not our ways. I'm constantly finding myself going, huh, I was wrong about that. What else might I be wrong about? Where am I supposed to do now, God? Mm -hmm. And if the listeners, all the listeners out there would just say, God, what am I supposed to do now? What do you want me to do now? What do you want me to do today? And obey that in spite of the facts. That's when you can stay in a position of joy. Yeah. John, thank you so much. That's so good. Million Voices is the name of the website. John Graves, millionvoices.org. Thank you so much for the encouragement today.